Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kiran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, welcome back. It is Friday, the 31st of December, 2021. I want to wish all my subscribers, listeners out there all around the world, a very happy new year. I hope you get everything you wish for and you have an enjoyable night tonight. Now, I'm wondering what everybody will be doing tonight. Are you going out to party? Will you be staying at home? What are your New Year's Eve plans? Would love to know them down below in the comment section. Well, me, myself, I had planned to head down to Phuket to engage in some festivities, go and see Mr. Bocelli and his son performing at Sepin Hin. But then I discovered that maybe he won't actually be there or maybe it's just going to be like him on a giant television because according to a tweet from Mr. Bocelli on his official Twitter account, he's actually playing live in Malta on New Year's Eve. So I have no idea what is going on in Phuket, but I will be dying to find out and I definitely think I will head down there to see what this is all about, whether or not he's actually really going to be there or is it just going to be him on a big TV coming live from Malta? Because as I said, he has tweeted that he will be in Malta performing. So this is very interesting. I wonder how much the Tourism Authority of Thailand have paid for that one. Now, on the other hand, he could be playing live there and maybe it's pre-recorded in Malta, but he makes no mention of playing in Phuket on his official Twitter account. Very strange indeed, but yeah, it's something we definitely have come to expect here in Thailand from time to time, and especially when the Tourism Authority of Thailand is involved. Anyway, we'll see what happens and we're going to start off with the first story of the day. There were 25 more COVID-19 fatalities and 3,037 new COVID cases registered during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry said on Thursday. There were 2,956 cases in the general population and 81 among prison inmates. This compared with 17 COVID-related fatalities and 2,575 new cases reported on Wednesday morning. On Wednesday, 3,115 COVID-19 patients were discharged from hospitals after recovering from the virus. The latest Phuket Provincial Public Health Office daily COVID situation report has marked 43 new local infections confirmed across the island yesterday, bringing the total number of people recognised as infected with COVID-19 in Phuket since April 3rd to 19,583. Confirmed Omicron cases in Thailand have increased to 739, including 488 cases among arrivals from abroad and 251 locally acquired cases, according to Dr. Subakit Sirilak, Director General of the Medical Services Department. He said that all the cases have been confirmed through whole genome sequencing, adding that full details about Omicron infections were given at a press conference yesterday afternoon. Now, to follow up on Phuket in relation to all of this, the Phuket Provincial Public Health Office has confirmed 92 cases of Omicron detected on the island, including the first local transmission of the COVID-19 variant marked as high-risk contacts identified by local hospitals. The news came in a series of reports posted online by the PPHO at 8.45pm last night. So far, officials have yet to recognise the local transmissions. The confirmation came only through the reports. According to the reports, the first high-risk contact in Phuket confirmed as infected with Omicron was case number 33, an Israeli male confirmed on December 20th. While all the cases listed before the Israeli were marked as confirmed at Phuket International Airport, the Israeli was confirmed at the Phuket Medical Sciences Center seven days ago. Of note of the 92 people infected with Omicron listed in the PPHO report, four had no dates marked to indicate when the swab tests were taken, indicating that officials at this stage either do not want to report it or they do not know. I think one of the things we need to always realize when it comes to the numbers coming out of Phuket in relation to COVID is they're always delayed results or they're not giving the full story behind them or they're just suppressing some of the results. So that's something that needs to be kept in mind when these numbers come out. They have been very secretive in the past and not transparent about them at all. 
And to follow up on a story from earlier last week, Israeli fined after fleeing positive Omicron result. The Bangkok South Municipal Court yesterday fined an Israeli tourist 2,000 baht for fleeing his hotel before he could receive a positive test result for the Omicron COVID-19 variant. An arrest warrant was issued by Tonglor Police Station on December 21st against Ohad Baruch, 29 years of age. It was reported that Baruch arrived in the country on December 17th on a test and go travel package and was quarantined overnight at a hotel in Sukhumvit area, pending an RT PCR test result. However, he left the same evening and visited Patia and then Kosamui in the south. On December 22nd, Baruch surrendered to police at a restaurant at Banrak Beach in Tambombo Put on Koh Samui. Police Colonel Duang Chut, superintendent of Tonglor Police Station, said the suspect pleaded guilty in court, so his punishment was reduced to a 2,000 baht fine. Immigration police have taken him into custody for deportation, the police colonel confirmed. Police Colonel Duang Chut said Baruch's actions violated COVID-19 control measures issued under Section 9 of the Emergency Decree on Public Administration in Emergency Situations. So that's just a follow-up on the story last week in which he was finally arrested or surrendered or whatever he did. He's been given a 2,000 baht fine and as I said previously he would definitely be deported for this. He'll probably be blacklisted from Thailand for a period of time and probably five years, probably something around that. They haven't said how long it'll be but he definitely will be. I mean when you come to Thailand you sign up for the test and go pass the first box on that page before you even get into the application is basically you consent to all this stuff and you agree to do and follow all the rules and regulations he's in breach of it at the end of the day 2000 baht I think is practically nothing of a fine it's a slap in the wrist but the deportation and the blacklisting will be the part that is a little more severe from him if he's a guy that likes to visit Thailand and you know he likes to come here he seems to know his way around the country so yeah it may affect him in the future who knows but yes that's a follow-up on that story so I'd love to know what you guys think about this out there. Do you think it's a fair sentence? Do you think it's too lenient? Do you think it's over the top? I'd love to know your comments down below in the comment section as always. Now, moving along to talk about something that has killed more people than the pandemic here in Thailand, and that is road accidents and motor traffic accidents here in the kingdom. And we have some statistics over the last uh, few days. So 39 people have died and 362 injured in road accidents on the first day of holiday travel. 39 people died and 362 people were injured in 363 road accidents nationwide on Wednesday, the first of the seven dangerous days as declared by the Thai Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation. The department chief said that the major cause of the road accidents was speed, accounting for 34.6%, followed by drunk driving, which accounted for 23.8%. 81.3% of the accidents involved motorcycles. 83.9% of the accidents took place on straight roads. 36.5% on roads under the supervision of the highways department and 34.6% on secondary roads and villages. Most of the accidents occurred between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Over 5,700 officials have been deployed at 1,875 road checkpoints nationwide. 360,000 vehicles have been examined at the checkpoints and 62,900 motorists and motorcyclists were found to have violated traffic laws, including 18,142 motorcyclists for not wearing crash helmets and 7,900 motorists for not wearing seatbelts. Nakhon Ratchisama in Thailand's northeast logged the most fatalities with five, while Ratchaburi province recorded the highest number of accidents with 13. So as you can see that although we have COVID and people dying, we certainly have seen to have a lot more people dying of on the roads. And I, I think it's something that is very preventable here if they had proper road management and rules and regulations being enforced by the police. But I think a lot of us who live here or have visited it here you know, know that that's just not the case. It's very rare you ever see anybody being pulled over for a road violation for speeding or anything like that. So yeah. I mean, this is what you get, I guess, when you have a lawless road system. But for people out there who's traveling in this holiday season here in Thailand, please be careful, slow it down, you know, watch out for those other crazy drivers because there is a lot out on the road these days. And most of all, guys, stay safe. And moving along to our next story. Bar K, starting point for variant super spreader event. A restaurant bar in Kalasam province is considered the starting point of the COVID-19 Omicron variant cluster that has spread to infect 248 people, the Department of Disease Control said. 
These infected people are now spread across 12 provinces in the north and northeast, it said. A married Thai couple visited the Callison Eatery on December 12th after they returned from Belgium. They tested negative of COVID-19 on December 10th, but later tested positive for Omicron. Dr. Opus, chief of the DDC, said a disease investigation team found the couple visited three bars in the province, which the DDC called Bar Q, Bar S and Bar K. Bar S implemented better measures under the Ministry of Public Health's recommendations than the other two, Dr. Opus said. Bar S asked staff to take a weekly ATK test and all staff had been fully vaccinated. It also followed the ministry's COVID-19 prevention guidelines. The bar closed at 11pm and the maximum customers it allowed was 40 with no extra seats. The disease investigation team said no one was infected with the new coronavirus from Bar S, he said. The DDC said Bar K did not provide ATK tests for staff who are fully vaccinated. The maximum number of customers was 90 with extra seats provided. It also had alcohol drink promotions and closed the bar at midnight. COVID-19 prevention measures were conducted poorly at Bar K, he said. The cause of the super spreader event incident began at Bar K and led to many clusters in the Isan region and the north, Dr. Opus said. There were 248 cases of Omicron infection related to the couple. We have raised the case to remind people that during the festive holiday, people must select restaurants that are less crowded and also have a good indoor ventilation system. The DDC did not provide data about Bar Q. Dr. Opus raised a similar case that originated in a Bangkok bar and restaurant where 52 positive cases of COVID-19 were linked. He said the bar and restaurant failed to follow required COVID-19 free measures and the DDC found COVID-19 in its air conditioning systems as well. And next up, private and public sectors urged to work from home after New Year holiday. Thailand's Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration, the CCSA, is seeking cooperation from both the public and private sectors by allowing their employees to work from home after the long New Year holiday, initially for 14 days, as the Omicron variant spreads through 33 areas infecting 740 people so far. The CCSA spokesman, Dr. Tuisan, told the media that the CCSA regards everyone traveling during the holiday to be at risk of infection at group or family activities and would like them to work from home when they return. Prime Minister Priyat Chanacha also called on all working people to monitor their health after their return from the holidays and to work from home if they develop any suspicious symptoms. He said he is pleased to see that most people in the country wear their face masks when they are outdoors and urged them not to lower their guard over the holidays, during which they will come in close contact with many people and put themselves at risk of being infected or of spreading the disease to others. According to the CCSA, 133,000 Thais and foreigners arrived in Thailand in November and 260,000 in December, with most of them entering the country via the Test and Go program, which requires just one night at an accredited hotel while waiting for results of the RT-PCR tests. 171 people were found to be infected with COVID-19 among arrivals in November and 946 among arrivals in December. Now, this is the government basing telling people to work from home in the new year now this is being spoken about in other parts of the media as well and a lot of people see this as the beginning of restrictions coming back to thailand in possibly january now what that article doesn't mention is the same thing is being spoken about in regards to schools and children going to school there is talk about having online learning returning and children not going back to school in january we'll see how that plays out i have a terrible feeling that the government here are going to overreact to the Omicron variant, and they are going to start to have a lot more restrictions here in the country, which would be detrimental to all kinds of businesses here, especially when people are just starting to somewhat get back to some normality here in the country. In relation to the travel, the test and go, and the various other schemes they have, I am highly doubtful that the test and go will be reinstated on January 4th. From what I'm hearing, it's going to continue to be suspended for at least two more weeks after that. And some other areas within Thailand, such as Panyad, so Kaulak, Panya area, are petitioning to have them being made a sandbox zone like Phuket. I'm not sure if they're going to actually be able to swing it or not because of issues with the amount of COVID testing that they can do in this province. But They are trying to do something and to be allowed to have tourists come to, let's say, the Kaulak area, which is just north of Phuket. But of course, the thing is, if the government allow them, then places like Chiang Mai and Pattaya are going to say, well, why can't we do it? 
and why are you allowing them to do it? And I think you're going to come into all kinds of issues. So I'm not sure that will swing with the government or not. As I said, I really am highly doubtful that the test and go will be reinstated January 4th. If it is, it'll be under a different kind of system, I think, and you'll definitely be paying and doing two PCR tests during your time here. Now, in relation to the current people who are coming, you are getting a free PCR test from the government uh, for your second one that you're meant to do. And that's just worth bearing in mind that it should be free if you have your Thailand pass already. There's a lot of confusion about how this is being organized in different areas around the country and who is actually paying for it and how these hospitals are getting reimbursed for it because a lot of private hospitals don't want to get involved in it. So it's people are being sent to public hospitals. So for example, in Panya, if you're in Kaulak area at the moment, you're being sent 50 minutes to Takwapa Hospital to have the test done. So you have to arrange a taxi over and back. And it's not really very well organized in terms of ease of getting the PCR test done. Also, it seems like a lot of people are arriving in Thailand and they're under the test and go, but they don't actually know that they have to do the second test. So that's another thing. A lot of people are still asking for, well, I, n- I never got my ATK test at the airport. What's going on? So yeah, no, the reason you're not getting that test is because you have to do another RT-PCR test, courtesy of the Thai government. Of course, they'll pay for it, as I said. But these are the things that are currently happening. There is a lot of bad information and lack of information being given to tourists arriving in the country. So they really don't know what's going on. And it's a bit of a surprise when they get here to find out that they have to do a second test. And But hopefully the government might make things a lot clearer in the next few weeks in terms of what their plan is for international travel into the country. Will they just continue with this sandbox model? Will they expand it and allow other areas to be sandboxes? But if you're going to do that, then they really have to be kind of sandbox areas. There has to be strict control of people going in and out. You just can't have people, you know, if you're going to bring in restrictions like this, then you have to have a controlled area. And that's the problem with a lot of these areas when you start going on to the mainland, not on an island, it's a lot harder to control people's movement, which is why they have a sandbox in the first place. Look, I don't agree with these sandbox areas. I think they can manage this whole Omicron variant by regular testing and, you know, by encouraging people to follow the rules and regulations that the government have set out, which I think have worked in Thailand for the last year and a half. We've never seen huge amounts of COVID here in the country. We've always had, it's it's never been too bad, you know, and that's what I'm saying, kind of. Hospitals have never been packed to capacity or anything like that. There's always been beds and hospitals for people when you need it to go. So yeah, I think things can be controlled a lot better without cutting off international tourism. The big problem when you start cutting off travel like this and you're not consistent with your rules and regulations is that travel agents, airlines, they start to look at you as unpredictable. And in this industry, the last thing you need is a country that's unpredictable. So yeah, that thing plays into their decision making, whether or not they will continue to fly charters, whether or not they'll continue to sell hotel rooms in the country and all these different things. Thai domestic tourism isn't strong enough to, you know, keep every hotel in this country going. So that is a big problem that they have right now. And the decisions they're making right now in re- in relation to January 4th and what they will do is a balancing act, trying to decide what's best for the country, but also remembering that people need to earn a living, make money, and these things all play into it. Now, what do you guys think out there? What's going to happen on January 4th? Do you think the test and go will be reinstated? Do you think they'll decide maybe to add another sandbox area to the Phuket sandbox? So maybe the Panya or the Krabi or maybe the Samui, bring back Samui, stuff like this. I'd love to know your opinion on it. And what do you think is the Thai government are overreacting to this whole Omicron variant or they're being, you know, smart in what they're doing? I'd love to hear your comments and hear your opinion down below in the comment section as always. And moving along to some very interesting tips for travel during the New Year holidays. The Thai Department of Health Services is offering tips for safe travel during New Year holidays, especially for protection against the virus, including the easily transmissible Omicron variant. Head of the department said that traveling together in the same private or public transport vehicle increases the risk of COVID-19 infection because people are together in a confined space for a long period of time. There is also poor air circulation in vehicles and a likelihood that some of the passengers may not wear face masks at all times or may talk with each other during the journey. Under such circumstances, he suggested the following tips. Wear face masks all the time and avoid talking during the journey. Avoiding eating together while traveling in the same vehicle. Do not share glasses, bottles, knives, spoons or forks. Maintain social distancing. 
in your car. Hmm. Avoid touching common surfaces at rest areas. On a long journey, stop the vehicle every hour and open the car windows. Before the journey, Dr. Soanchai said that travelers should assess the health via the Thai Save Ties app or other health applications to make sure they are not at risk or have no flu symptoms and should take an antigen test. Car drivers must check that their vehicles are in good working condition and apply sanitizer to all contact points on the vehicles, such as door handles and upholstery, he said, adding that car windows should be left open for better air circulation. Those who have been in close contact with the infected or who are suspected of being infected should cancel their trip, get RT-PCR tests and isolate for at least 14 days. So there are the tips for travel during the new year here in Thailand. If you're in a car with all your family, do not talk with them. Do not touch them. Wear your face mask. Social distance in the car. Sanitize yourself up and down. Stop every hour to open up all the car windows. I mean, this sounds like a great way to travel over the holiday period. Why on earth would you travel with with recommendations like this? Of course, nobody would ever do this because this is all nonsense taught up by a guy who obviously doesn't travel with his family or people because this is just craziness. I, I just found this quite interesting, guys, because this is actually published in all the Thai media at the moment. And they're promoting this as how you should travel during the holiday period and i just think it's just badly thought out and there's no way you could practically implement any of this really and finally the phuket news roundup sandbox helps russians stay top in phuket tourist arrivals from russia held a top spot as the number one tourist source market demographic over the christmas holidays a position they are likely to keep throughout the coming new year phuket officials silent on start of seven days of danger In a giant break from decades of tradition, Phuket officials have yet to make any reports on deaths or injuries from road accidents in the Seven Days of Danger road safety campaign for New Year 2022. Phuket Omicron infections confirmed as high-risk contacts. The Phuket Provincial Public Health Office has confirmed 92 cases of Omicron detected on the island, including the first local transmissions of the COVID-19 variant marked as high-risk contacts identified by local hospitals. And finally, police ramp up a 100% helmet campaign. Provincial police have ramped up their 100% wear a helmet campaign with a public awareness event held at the Region 8 police headquarters at the northern end of Phuket. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kira Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.